The foundational manga and anime Dragon Ball Z has made a huge mark on popular culture and on me. Cell Saga is the best saga. Its influence is everywhere. Going Super Saiyan as a meme has even made it into sports culture. But is there a way to explain this iconic transformation without mystical talking dragons and hyperbolic time chambers? Oh wait, let's start the episode correctly. But before we start today's show, in case you missed our announcement, because science is now its own thing, you can go right now and subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel and across social media handles for just this show and more of this show as we grow and expand with you, the people who love BSing. So go, go subscribe here. I'll wait. What was I doing? In Dragon Ball Z, going Super Saiyan is a way for a fighter to unlock potential and radically increase their power level. But tapping into this reservoir of energy is explicitly about life forces and ki and the afterlife in the show and the manga, but I think that science can make sense of the transformation too. Let's be scientific about this. When someone goes Super Saiyan, what do we observe? Well, when Goku makes the transformation, his hair stands up and changes color, and then an aura of energy stuff forms around him and electricity crackles randomly throughout the air. Also, when he's in this state, he can fly and fling energy orbs around. Is there some theory that we can come up with that explains all this data? I think so, and we can start with what starts in the clouds, lightning. Now, we don't know how lightning starts. It could be random cosmic rays, but we know how lightning gets going. During a thunderstorm, air in a cloud is moving around enough that the particles inside of that cloud are gaining charge and then separating. They are moving negative charges to the bottom of the cloud, which is inducing a large positive charge on the surface of the Earth. Now, when this imbalance of charge gets large enough between these two systems, it is suddenly balanced by a massive surge of electricity that thunders to the ground at up to 50% the speed of light. Almost instantaneous. Oops, too far. Too far. So if Saiyans could build up massive electric potential on the outside of their bodies like storm clouds do, then it might explain the random electrical arcs and sparks that form when they transform. It's like tiny lightning. But this could also explain why their hair stands up on it. Now you probably have heard of static electricity, but do you know why it's called that and why it makes your hair go all funny? I didn't. If I rub a balloon on the surface of my head, some of my head's electrons, which are negatively charged, are gonna wanna jump onto the balloon, which leaves behind a relatively positive charge on the surface of my head just sitting there, statically static electricity. My hair is now attracted to the balloon because the charges are dissimilar, but because my hair has a relatively positive charge, which is all similar, they want to repel each other. And the only way to get as far apart as possible from each other, geometrically speaking, is to separate like this. Kind of Super Saiyan-y. I mean, it's not quite Goku, but he probably uses product. Giant electric potentials do a decent job of explaining electric, electric arcs and spiky hair, but what about the flashier stuff? If we think Will about- Will Kyle ever finish his episode? What? Find out next time on Because oh, Science. Oh, I, I guess we, I guess we can't do that. Last time on Because Science. Kyle started his explanation, but will he ever finish? Okay, like I was, saying, if we think about going Super Saiyan like manipulating large electric potentials around the body, can this explain the auras that we observe around these characters when they transform? Now imagine that this Dragon Ball here is covered in a large amount of charge, say negative charge like the bottom of a storm cloud. This creates an electric field around it. Now any atoms in the air that have a charge that come near this electric field are going to be accelerated by it. Now, if just one of those accelerated particles has enough energy to hit a neutral atom and rip its electrons off to ionize it, then it will start a chain reaction where all the nearby atoms are ionized going forward, what's called an electron 
avalanche, and it turns air instantaneously from an insulator to a conductor, allowing current to flow. This is how lightning propagates, and this is what we see, because as these ions recombine with their electrons, they release energy in the form of photons of light. But at smaller scales, before arcs, before sparks form, these kinds of avalanches can look more like glowing auras. This glow is called a corona discharge, casual Kamehameha, and these discharges look pretty close to the auras that we want. And they form even better on edges and spikes because charge tends to gather there, which Goku and his hair have a lot of, have a lot of, have, have a lot of. And speaking of his hair, coronas can also change color. Because corona discharges break down air like neon signs do, if the gases change, then the colors change. So for example, if Goku, with all of his electric potential, was on a planet with a sodium vapor rich atmosphere, his aura through corona discharge would look yellowish. If it was a mercury vapor rich atmosphere, it would look bluish. And if the atmosphere was full of neon gas, then it would appear red. So, different atmospheric conditions combined with the corona discharge could change the color of Super Saiyan auras and, by extension, their hair as you looked through those auras. I know that the auras are more linked to power level and has nothing to do with the gases that they're in, but come on, I'm, I'm trying my best here. It's very uncomfortable in weighted clothes. They are heavy. All that's left to explain is Super Saiyan flight and energy orbs, which is the next topic that I'm going to explain Right now, if I am not interrupted. All right, we're good. How so, will Kyle's explanation end? Find out next Why time. Why can't it just be one episode? Last time on Because Science. Kyle continued his explanation, but can he science the last aspects of going Super Saiyan? <sighs> I think electrically powered Super Saiyans has worked as a decent theory so far, and it works as a way for them to fly too. If I had a large electric charge over the surface of my body, it would spread out, but gather at the points and edges, and then it would break down the air along these points and edges in corona discharges like we talked about. But because that air is breaking down and ionizing, some of it is going to have the same charge, meaning that it's going to be repelled in this process, which drags surrounding air along with it, creating an ionic wind. Boop. If you perfectly direct ionic wind, you can generate thrust, and you can spin tiny paper airplanes around, or lift ionocraft. Sure, the thrust on display here is minuscule, but that's only because we haven't created powerful batteries that are very, very light. So if Super Saiyans could generate millions of volts of electric potential on the surface of their bodies and perfectly direct the ionic wind perfectly, then they could, in theory, fly. And this actually fits with what we observe in the show. When you go Super Saiyan, you create a giant blast of wind that can even lift other characters up off of the ground. Ah! Sensu bean, please. Thank you. Ah! Oh, what did a cat with a walking stick make this that lives in the sky and talks? Ugh. D Dragon Ball Z is weird. The final part of going Super Saiyan, having access to giant channels or orbs of energy, might be the easiest to explain. In between large electric potentials, the air breaks down in an electron avalanche. And when that happens, the air goes from insulator to conductor and current can flow as long as voltage is being supplied. Like we talked about, this is how arcs and sparks and corona discharges form, but what they form, what is hot and glowy and dangerous, is the fourth state of matter, plasma. Basically a superheated gas with its electrons ripped from the nuclei of its atoms. This could be our blob of energy. It would still have to be shaped by Super Saiyan powers, Magnetic fields, question mark? But we could, in theory, use this as a source of potentially destructive thermal and kinetic energy. So how could you go Super Saiyan with science? Well, what I am proposing is that mastering life energy or ki is really just mastering electric potential, being able to muster and marshal oceans of electric charge to generate lift from ionic wind, to create auras and their color from corona discharges, to get spiky hair and electrical arcs off your body that make you look all cool from static electricity and globs of plasma from the superheated gases that result 
from all that other stuff. All you need to do is throw the switch. Because Will Kyle ever finish his episode? I just did. Can he science going super safe? I think I did okay. Because science. Exactly. Air is a very good insulator. The figure that you can use is about 10,000 volts to break down one centimeter of air. So if you've ever seen a spark jump a gap, like if you, if you rub your feet and touch a uh, metal object, if it is an inch long or you know, 2.54 centimeters, it's like 30,000 volts that is jumping from your body into another body. But because the current isn't that high, uh, you don't have a heart attack, which is good. Thank you so much for watching, Tina. Remember that Because Science is now its own YouTube channel. You can go right now to youtube.com slash C slash Because Science and subscribe to just this show. And you'll get more of this show. And hit that notification bell and you will get it the second it goes up. Go ahead, go do it right now. Or follow me on social media. Or Because Science is social media. I'll wait. I'll wait so long the video will end.